Hello, Dave here with RadiationHealthRisks.com. Uh, appreciate you stopping by and watching the video. I wanted to just talk just briefly today about something called a ferrite bead. I've gotten some questions about that and I wanted to explain a little bit better. So, by the way, before I forget, if when you're done with this video, if you, if you like what you saw, uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell and like the video. That helps us get the word out. We always appreciate that. So, what is a ferrite bead? This is the top half of, of the uh, power cord to my, uh, one of my computer monitors. And you can see towards the top, there's this little cylinder here. A um, lot of power cords for like laptops and monitors and different things have that. And basically what that does, it's a ferrite bead. What it does is um, a ferrite bead um, allows the currency, I mean the current that's supposed to go through these cords to go through it. Um, but the, it blocks the higher frequencies that aren't supposed to go through the cord. So, matter of fact, the higher the frequency is, the better they work. They, they become basically a resistor. And, and so they filter off and block the high frequencies. Why is that important on a cord like this? Because anytime you have anything that's ch manipulating the current, changing it from AC to DC or whatever, um, it causes... Uh, high spikes and surges, high frequency spikes and surges to, to get put on that line. And if you don't have a ferrite bead on there to, to resist that and to filter it off, uh, it can go up into the whatever the electronic device is and go up and damage the circuit board. So that's why they put these on here. So um, the, I want to talk a little bit about, um, before I get into more about the ferrite bead. I'm going to show you exactly how to use it on cell phone and everything. Before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about frequencies so that because that'll be important in understanding the the the, the power of, of, a, of a ferrite bead. Um, and by the way, if you want to know more about ferrite beads and when I tell you in this video, there's lots of YouTube uh, videos. I don't know if lots, but there's some really good vi um, YouTube videos on there. There's some where you, you can actually, they, they have a, you know, a professional scope and they show the current going over you can see it on the screen they show the current going over the wire and then they put a ferrite bead and you can see how it affects the higher frequencies um, really good really good information out there on that so I'm just going to give you the basic here so so anyway um, from uh, the area where electric currents and magnetic fields electric fields and magnetic fields um, become a high enough frequency to where they become airborne that, that's what radio waves are. From that level all the way up to, you, you get first into like AM and FM and shortwave radios, and then you get in, it's called the electromagnetic spectrum, and at the bottom is radio waves, like I'm talking about. Then you get up into microwaves, then you get up into things like infrared and visible light, and then you get up into things like uh, x-rays and gamma rays. Um, that's called the ionizing top portion of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum, whereas the radio frequency portion is, is non-ionizing. Anyway, the, um, um, the radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum starts at about where the, the electric and magnetic fields become airborne down at the bottom, all the way up to about 300 gigahertz frequency. That's considered the RF or radio frequency um, portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Within that portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, the higher the frequency is, the more dangerous it is to us. That's not true of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, but it is true of the radio frequency portion. Now, part of that radio frequency portion is microwaves. Microwaves goes from about uh, 1 gigahertz roughly to 300 gigahertz. And just to kind of give you, throw some numbers out there, just to kind of give you some perspective, um, your typical microwave oven, for example, cooks your food at 2.45 gigahertz. Um, your typical cell phone uses between one, um, somewhere 1.5, 1.4, up to 2.4 um, gigahertz, depending on the model and the make and everything, and what type. Um, and then, like a Wi-Fi router uses... 
Typically, most of them use 2.4 gigahertz. You also have the 5 gigahertz router, which use 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And then the new 5G routers, the ones that are out so far, use 60 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. So, again, within that uh, radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, the higher the frequency, the more dangerous it, it is to us. So my point in, sorry for all the numbers, but my point in explaining all that to you is that I want you to understand how much higher the frequency is that a cell phone puts out. It's microwave radiation. It's over one gigahertz. But how much higher that frequency is compared to the frequency that is supposed to be on a corded headset. It's a lot higher. And so... A ferrite bead, this is an example of a ferrite bead there. You can put on the bottom, we'll talk about this a little bit more. But a ferrite bead, actually the higher the frequency that's trying to go over the wire, the more, the better job it does at blocking it, the more it acts like a resistor and blocks it. So a ferrite bead works really, really good from, because when you have a, a corded headset that's plugged into the bottom of a cell phone like that, um, the, the RF radiation um, coming off of that cell phone acts, grabs onto that wire just like it was an antenna and goes right up that wire right into your head. Now, let's talk briefly about um, cell phones in general and, and, and this for a second. Um, you don't want to hold your cell phone to your head like that. You don't want to put a Bluetooth, your, your ear is basically a hole in your head. If you put a Bluetooth earbud in there or Bluetooth headset, You've got nothing but soft tissue between that microwave radiation source and your and your brain. Um, so, um, but if you use just a regular corded headset, the, the radiation runs right up the cord and right into your ear as well. So, everything I'm going to be trying to explain to you, like I have in other videos, um, so apologize for the repeat for some of you, um, is you're trying to get distance between... The, the, the source of the RF radiation, in this case a cell phone, and your body because the RF radiation dissipates also by distance. So you could, you know, put your cell phone on the ground and put it on speakerphone and that puts some distance there. That's, that's probably the safest way to use a cell phone talking on it. I personally don't like talking on speakerphone. I don't like it when other people talk on speakerphones. But that is the safest way. And normally when I try doing that, people say, hey, could you take me off speakerphone? But anyway, so the best alternative to that is something called an air tube headset, which basically works like a, like a doctor's stethoscope. It's got air tubes here. So when that radiation is trying to run up the cord from the cell phone, it runs all the way up and it stops at these little things here, which are speakers. Um, it can't go through the air tubes. So when you have this plugged into your head like that, the radiation comes it comes up the cord and it stops right there. It doesn't go up into your head. So that's kind of like, instead of talking on a cell phone, holding it up here to your head, it's like talking on a cell phone, holding it here. Because that radiation is still in the cord and when the cord touches your body, it's dissipating in, into your body. So that's the problem with an air tube headset. I said, but I did say this was the safest way to do it. But that's if you have a ferrite bead at the bottom, hence ferrite beads. So if you, if you put a ferrite bead at the bottom or two ferrite beads, it, it will block the, the high frequencies of the, of the cell phone um, from going up to your ear. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about how, how to do it. So, th so the safest way to use it first before you get into that is an air tube headset with a, fire, a ferrite bead at the bottom. Some people complain that they don't like the weight of a... Of a, of a an air tube headset. So that's the safest way. The next safest way would be a regular corded headset. It could be any kind of a corded headset. But the key thing is, is that you put um, ferrite bead or two on the bottom of the, of the uh, corded headset. Um, you'll still have the low frequency radiation, but the, the, like I said, the frequency it goes up a little cord like this up to your ears. It's still EMF radiation. There's no safe level of, of uh, electromagnetic radiation, but it's a lot better for you than the cell phone radiation, is my point. 
So, um, so let's talk a little bit about doing the ferrite bead. Um, interesting thing about ferrite beads, two work better than one, three work better than two, and what really makes them work really good too is, is if you wind the cord a second time through them. So if you can see here, I, I ran it the, the cord through, then I wrapped it around and ran it through again. So if you're going to put two of them on there, you want to wrap it around again. I've never seen anybody put three of them on there, but but anyway, um, that that wrapping them acts almost like having another, or it acts does act like having another ferrite bead on there. It really when you watch it, um, I was watching a video where a guy had it on the scope and he added another ferrite bead on there, and it really dramatically and then the winding really reduced it. So so anyway, um, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, let me pause the video for one second. Okay, a couple quick things I want to add to the end that's super, super important. Um, we talked about keeping distance between you and the cell phone. Um, I've had some questions lately also about these um, uh, they're radiation shielding cases. This one doesn't match this phone, so I don't have it on there. This is just one of the extra ones that I have. Um, there's, there's lots of different brands. The idea behind them is they have, uh, they have metallic shielding material in there and you hold it up to your head. The idea is it's supposed to block the radiation. And I've, in some of my other videos, I've actually done tests with meters where I show that it does block a significant amount of the radiation, but the radiation, um, just like if you don't have a smart meter guard on your smart meter, the smart meter radiation will go around the metal box that it can't go through and still go into your house and blast your house with radiation. The same is true with this. The, the, the phone, is, the RF radiation is going to still go around it. Um, when I measure it from flat, you know, flat like this, it blocks most of it. You hold it at all tilted, then you're getting a lot more of it going into you. So even if you have it, I, again, I, I personally recommend having a shielded phone case because to me, <laughs> I just feel safer because I know this material blocks it. I feel safer having that between me and the cell phone than going like that if I ever have to do it that way. Obviously, normally I use these. Um, but sometimes you might have forgotten to bring this or whatever and you, you got to hold it up. And so it's better, in my opinion, it's better to have a, a, a shielding case. Um, but you just got to know, don't want to do that. Even with a shield in case, you don't want to hold it to your head if you can help it. Um, what my wife does is, is she'll put, she has this on it and she'll put it in her purse. She carries her cell phone in her purse. And we just always put that side, the shielding side, when she sticks it in her purse, it's the side of her purse that's always towards her body. She puts that shielding side there. Again, some of the radiation is going to come around, the bag's wiggling and all that. It isn't the perfect thing, but we feel better if you have it than the, to have it than not. Because um, you know you're getting 100% of it without it. And then um, the other thing is, even with a shielding case, you definitely don't want to keep it in your pocket. You don't want to, you know, like I said, hold it up your head. You don't want to keep it in your pocket. Um, especially people that put them in their front pockets. That is going to go right around. It's not going to protect you at all in, in that kind of a situation. Um, so my wife keeps it in her purse. I, I either hold it in my hand or if it's cold enough that I have a jacket on, I put it in the bottom coat pocket of the jacket. So uh, at least it's, you know, loosens. There's some distance between it and my body. So just wanted to do a quick mention on that because I had some questions on that as well. So I hope that helped. I appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to watch this video. Again, please subscribe, hit the like button, a little bell. That always helps us. So thanks, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next video. Appreciate it.